Uh, before we go to the traffic filter capabilities, make sure that you're aware that no ports should be configured as static access into the primary VLAN. The primary VLAN is dedicated to, as use case, only to promiscuous ports. So once I I'm going to configure that 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 kind of, uh, of of setup, where associate secondary secondary VLANs with primary VLANs, I configure the secondary VLAN types, and then I go on the on the layer two ports and put in the configure those to be either in pr promiscuous ports or or host ports, which means are going to be attached to the isolated or to the, to the community VLAN. Let's see what is the use case of that. Well, the use case is that members connected to the isolated VLAN can only communicate with hosts attached to the promiscuous port, which for sure one of those promiscuous ports, on, on, any, on one of the promiscuous ports, I have to have attached the default gateway of the segment. Because with, with what is going to happen is that if I'm going to have five hosts within the VLAN, and they're going to belong to the secondary VLAN of isolated. They cannot speak with each other. It's like the protected port feature, but this feature spans across switches. That's the that's the magic of it. That's the advantage of it. But still, I want those hosts to be able to maybe send traffic out of the out of the VLAN. So they have to be able to communicate with somebody within the VLAN, and that's going to be the promiscuous port. So on the promiscuous ports, I'm going to have connected in general the default gateway of the VLAN or any other devices which have to be reachable by from any of the secondary VLANs. Because from the community VLAN point of view, any device which is going to be attached to the community secondary VLAN, like if I'm going to have 10 devices in the, in the community VLAN of number 15, they can actually communicate in between freely and they can also communicate with the hosts attached to promiscuous ports. So that's why it's called a community because members of the same community VLAN are going to be able to freely communicate one to each other but as you can see isolated ports cannot speak with community ports. So that's the, the whole thing of it. So isolated ports is going to be if I have 10 ports as isolated they cannot communicate in between is like private VLAN edge, but they sh they are going to be able to communicate with the promiscuous port where I'm going to have the default gateway so that those endpoints can actually uh, can actually uh, send traffic out of the VLAN by communicating with the default gateway, and then the community ports is going to be a, 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 whoever is going to be a member of the community port they can speak in between and also they can speak with the promiscuous ports so that they, they can send traffic out of the VLAN. So it's getting much more. It's 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 heavily more complex than private VLAN edge, but it it, it gives you much more uh, much more control over who can speak with who in the network at layer two, and also this configuration spans across switches, which is clearly uh, better in case you need that. So in case you you want to do this kind of filtering policy, but the, the host of the same VLAN are connected and spread across multiple switches, you cannot use private VLAN edge. Okay, let's see if there are any questions before we move on. Okay, there's a question from Dimitri. Can you please once again explain the difference between private VLANs and sub VLANs? Okay, so sub VLANs are going to be a characteristic of requirement of private VLANs. Let me show you the following use case. So let's go in here and say new blank page. So if for example you have the following use case where you have two switches, switch one and switch two. And those two switches are connected over a trunk port. This is a trunk port. This is switch one. This is switch two. And then let's say that you have in the same VLAN, whatever the VLAN is, you have host one, host two, host three, 
and you want to make sure that those hosts cannot speak in between. All traffic between hosts want to interface being blocked by the switch. Then what do you do? You go on the switch and you configure all of those three ports. You configure all of them as protected. And this is the private VLAN edge feature. It's called private VLAN edge because in general you're going to deploy this at the edge of the network like on a DMZ switch when, when you have a single DMZ switch, not multiple of them. But for example, if you have this use case with two switches and you have also not a host in here of host four and you want to limit, you want to make sure that host one, two and three cannot speak with host four, if you go on switch two and make this port as protected, it's not gonna work. So switch host four protected with this configuration, host four is gonna be able to freely speak with any of the other three hosts. Because this private VLAN edge feature does not span across switches. So you cannot configure this kind of policy that devices connected on multi on different switches, they cannot communicate one with each other by using the private VLAN edge feature. So it means that if you have this use case, you have to use the private VLAN configuration. So let's say another blank page and let's put again those two switches which are connected via a trunk port. So this is a trunk port. So for example, let's say that you have host one host 2 host 3 and then you have host 4 host 5 and host 6 let's say And your policy is, so they are connected exactly like this. And initially, all of them, so all host one to host six belong to VLAN, let's say, 100. Which means all intra-VLAN traffic is being allowed back and forth. And you don't want this. What you actually want is the black devices, which is host one, two, and three, should not be able to communicate one to another, but then host four, five, and six should be able to communicate one to another. So if initially all devices were, were actually in VLAN 10, that's gonna be your primary VLAN. So if all devices got connected initially in VLAN 10, that's gonna be your primary VLAN to begin with. And then you're gonna configure, let's say VLAN number 20, VLAN 20, which is gonna be isolated, which is gonna be attached to the, to the primary VLAN. This is the isolated secondary VLAN. And then you also configure VLAN 30, which is likewise secondary, but of type community. VLAN 30, which is going to be your community secondary or sub VLAN. So if initially everybody was connected to VLAN 10, and I'll put in here with orange VLAN 10, that initially everybody was connected to VLAN 10 initially. So they all got access back and forward. This is VLAN 10. Then in the end, I'm going to put the black devices, I'm going to configure them as host ports, but connected to the isolated VLAN. So host 1 and 2 are going to actually be connected to the isolated VLAN of VLAN 20. Likewise, 
host 3. So this is now VLAN 20. And because that's going to be an isolated VLAN, it means no traffic is allowed to flow back and forward between host 1, 2, or 3. And then because I'm going to connect, I'm going to attach host 4 and 5 to the other secondary VLAN, which is going to be the community VLAN. So the switch port where those devices are connected are going to configure as type from uh, as type private VLAN host, but they're going to be connected to and attached to VLAN 30. And because VLAN 30 is a community VLAN, it means that all devices connected in the community VLAN can speak in between freely. Like host four, five, and six, they can speak one with each other without any problems. And the only thing I'm missing at this point is that at this point, devices cannot send traffic off of the uh, off of the VLAN. Because I have not stated this before, but you can imagine that all of those devices have IP addresses from the same subnet. So initially, they were everybody was connected to VLAN 10, which means everybody could speak freely in between all of those hosts. Now with this specific configuration. I'm keeping the same IP addressing, so everybody is still in the same IP subnet. But with this sub VLAN and secondary VLAN configuration, I'm making sure that hosts 1, 2, and 3 cannot speak with each other. So whatever is going to be in the black VLAN is isolated. They're isolated. They cannot communicate with each other. And whatever is going to be in the green VLAN, because that's a community VLAN, they can speak one with each other. And of course, the community, the community host cannot speak with the isolated host. That makes sense. But now my challenge is that if I want those devices to be able to send traffic off, the, off of the VLAN, then they have to be able to speak with the default gateway. And then the default gateway, it is going to be connected to a promiscuous port, which the promiscuous port is actually attached to the primary VLAN. So everybody is going to, if, if I configure it, the, the, the devices properly, all hosts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are going to be able to speak with the default gateway. Because the default gateway is attached to the primary VLAN, and ultimately, all devices are actually attached to the primary VLAN. I'm using those secondary sub-VLANs just to enforce intra-VLAN traffic policies. Who can speak with who in that VLAN? But then ultimately, all devices belong to the primary VLAN, which is 10, because the secondary VLANs are attached to the primary VLAN. So that's why the default gateway of that segment is going to be connected as a promiscuous port, because everybody's going to be able to connect to the default gateway so to be able to send and receive traffic back and forth out of the VLAN. So Dimitri, let me know if this makes much more sense now. Hopefully it does.